Hi, this is Jamie Lawson, and you're checking out my backstage interview at One Starry Night. Star 1013. One Starry Night, we're backstage with the opener, Jamie Lawson. What's going on, my man? Hello, how are you? I heard a rumor, and correct me if I'm wrong, you just flew in from Amsterdam. Uh, three days ago, yeah. Okay. You're going to do this show, and then you can fly back out to England, is this back correct? Back to London, yeah. For a day. Wow. And then back again. Wow. I know. You must really love San Francisco. <laughs> oh, do I fly back to San Francisco or somewhere else? I think I fly somewhere else. Sorry. Do you even know your schedule at this point or is it just... For all the next day I do. Okay. But after that, there's no point knowing, is there? Do you like the long flights? No. Okay. Not in the slightest. <laughs> tell, tell, <laughs> really hate tell us how you really feel. <laughs> do you yeah. sleep on planes? No, that's why I don't like them. Do you drink on planes? No. Oh, well, that's a problem. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, you know, as a, a singing person, I generally don't drink much. Okay. So, planes, I just don't think that would be a good mix. Okay. Yeah, it can get know. bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're here tonight. We're excited for that. Um, and I know you and Ed Sheeran are good buddies. I love how the whole story started. I love how you guys were kind of performing together years ago. Yeah. And and he's everyone knows Ed Sheeran. He's like wh he loves you, and he kept saying, "Why isn't anyone signing him?" So he did it himself. Is that is that the yeah, truth? Yeah, pretty much. It's crazy, isn't it? Really, because he's very young. So the idea that he would start his own record label at such a young age is pretty mad. Yeah. But yeah, bless him for uh, kind of reaching back and dragging me out. Uh, it's very kind of him. How did you guys meet each other? So we were playing in London, uh, uh, a place called the Bedford in Balham, and it's uh, an acoustic venue that's kind of one of those venues that if you're coming up through you know the scene or whatever sure. it's one of those venues you have to play mm -hmm. okay so uh we were on the same bill and we got on pretty well but we lost touch straight away and he became this you know uber famous person right and uh, i didn't how did he decide that you were the guy <laughs> <laughs> well let's back it up a little bit were you upset about that no not in the slightest the time, no no, no, no. Be honest, no time, honestly though. i wasn't i was over the moon for him uh you know he's a talented guy for sure and i could tell that the first time I met him and right. the first time I saw him play. So, no, you can't be, you know, you can't be bitter or jealous about people sure. that have genuine, brilliant talent. Did he look at you and say, don't worry, Jamie, I'll come back for you? <laughs> no. It's not it? the Titanic. I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Not a love story. <laughs> what was it like, though, when he did call and say, I want, I want to work with you, let's do this? Was that weird? Yeah, well, he actually told me, he, he told me about his record label idea when we were out on tour. And because uh, I was opening up for him and uh, he was drunk. So I just assumed he was joking and that he would forget about the whole thing. But uh, he sent me a text the next day saying, no, I'm serious. It was for real. Yeah, it was for real. And he had his, he kind of had phoned his people already. And right, said, right. Is this possible? And, and then your people were you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then I got a text saying, yeah. How has it been thus far? Like I saw you on, I think on Ellen. Yeah. Uh, I watched the video for... Uh, wasn't expecting that. I love the story there, but I want to go back to doing like American television. How is the whirlwind been? Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, Ellen's, that's like one of the biggest shows in the it world. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's so, like, oddly enough, when I wrote the song, mm -hmm. I always thought, if I can get this on Ellen, then really? Did you really? It was the one of the, you know, it's, it's an odd thing. Because I don't have that sort of thought about much that I do but right. that song in particular I thought if I can get this on Ellen that would yeah. be amazing did you have a little moment backstage you're like I did it I did, <laughs> I did it. a little bit yeah 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 <laughs> but what was the, the weirdest thing about it was that I wasn't really nervous I kind of knew it was coming and you can't really prepare for it anyway mm -hmm. but then when I was doing the song um, I started it you know the doors came back or whatever I started singing and then halfway through or and I'm thinking I'm, I'm on Ellen <laughs> and then what was weird is my feet started shaking and because my hands were too busy, right, right. it was like so other the parts of, of my body. body started getting nervous for me. It was very strange. That's cute. That's yeah. But you you sailed through, and you, you well, I don't know if I sailed through. I got through. You got <laughs> through. That's <laughs> the way I look at it. I got through it. I like talking about bad gigs. Is there a gig in the past that stands out that was either unusual or just so awful? Um, there was one. There was a time a few years back. I was doing these kind of pub gigs, you know, cover gigs for making money. That's how I've made my money. Mm -hmm. And um, I literally played to no one. Like, no one. So there was two people in a bar. One of them was an audience member, right. if you can call it that. The other guy was the uh, bartender. The audience guy had to go, which left the bartender. And oh, then the bartender oh, left. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm still singing. <laughs> and I'm literally playing to an empty room and getting paid for it. And I figured, well... It can't get any worse now. At least you got paid, though. Exactly. That's good. Exactly. That's kind of rock bottom right there. So. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, man, we love to have you here. It's almost like uh, full circle now. We've got a sold out show here at the Masonic One know, Starry amazing. Night. Um, uh, Star 1013, the first station in America, I understand, to play, uh, yeah, to play the song. Amazing. And, and I can't believe that. And we that's just, so kind of you. So. We all fell in love with it at once. Well, I feel like. We were like, wait a minute, who is this dude? Marcus has man crushed on you <laughs> in the studio to the point where I'm uncomfortable. Because <laughs> you are very good looking, but he um, knows it more than I do. And I don't know. And he's married. I don't know. I don't understand the dynamics. It's but more about the whole, pa like, I just want to be, at, at the end of the day, I want to be a singer songwriter. Okay. But I don't play any instruments. Okay. And I realized not too long ago that guy in band, cool. Guy playing karaoke is creepy. So <laughs> I just want to get That's a little bit of it through osmosis. But <laughs> well, thanks. But, and thank you for playing it, though, for being the first that's amazing yeah uh and you know continuing to play it that's what means the most you we're know, so excited to so. have you here and we encouraged everyone to come out early because we want well, them to come you. and experience it and see what what we've seen and what ed has seen and give us a little taste of what we can experience what we're going to expect on stage tonight well i don't know you know it's kind of like everyone else is in a band and i'm just me right so uh, i'm the only solo act you know just doing his little thing so um what was that like when it was just you and then the one direction crowd yeah weird <laughs> yeah, <laughs> overwhelming. Why is, that, why is that? It was just, you know, that's a whole audience that I never thought I'd play to, and a, obviously a very unusual combination of myself and then One Direction. Right. So, um, you know, the biggest pop boy band on the planet, and me, opening up for him. It's kind, you know, things, moments like that. They're kind of like, this is just strange, <laughs> but it was really great, and their audience was really supportive, and have continued to be very supportive. You know, so it's been fantastic, really. Did you sell some merchandise on that tour? We did, okay. but you know. It's, oh. it, we made some fans. We, um, we did this meet and greet afterwards um, between my set and their, their set, and the queue got longer every single night mm -hmm. to the point of literally meeting about a thousand people or something, which is fantastic. pretty weird. Was it a majority of teenage girls? Yeah. Yeah. Is that overwhelming? It's teenage girls and their mums. Oh, and their moms? <laughs> yeah. Who's and their parents, overwhelming? Their aunts, their, you know, their uncles. It's like, because they're quite, a lot of them are quite young. So. Yeah, yeah, they can't drive to the gig. Exactly, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> Dude, we are so excited to have you here. Thank Opening you up much. One Starry Night. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, congratulations on your continued success. Thank you. Thank Jamie you Lawson, much. we're backstage at One Starry Night, Star 101.3.